Good morning. Good morning. morning. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, God's timing is amazing. And uh, it's interesting that our, I just, uh, our son and his wife and two kids that were looking again to Israel. And uh, <clears throat> they were talking about booking their flights and everything. And I just sent a message this morning. I said, uh, hope, you, hope you guys haven't booked your flights to Israel. And because um, a lot of the younger people today don't read the news. Up. Oh, okay. Is that better? <laughs> a lot of, uh, a lot of um, um, young people don't read the news these days because they're too scared of it, what's going on. Anyway, she said, uh, you know what? We were just so close to booking them yesterday, but we thought we'd wait until next week. We we're definitely watching what happens next. We need to be alert. Uh, we need to be um, watching. Not, this, not Channel 9 or Channel 10 or SBS, I'm not talking about that, but watching. And more watching from a spiritual perspective. And. Um, what I'm going to be speaking about today is, uh, the title is Spiritual Fitness. My son that I just talked about, he's a, he's a, a gym junkie. He, you know, he's always going to the gym and building himself up and all those different things. And as it says, it's, it's, that's important you know, to keep ourselves um, fit and healthy and eat all the right foods and everything, but that's nothing compared to how we should keep ourselves spiritually fit. So how do we do that? It's interesting living on the Gulf, on the Sunshine Coast, um, like in Melbourne yesterday, it was a, uh, I think a minimum of three and a maximum of 13, and people were all done up in their overcoats. But you walk around the Sunshine Coast and there's people all in their sports gear. You know, like was king up here. And uh, <clears throat> so they have their sports, you know, the tights on and the, everything. They all look fantastic, but you often, I look at it and I think, yes, you look the part, but are, are you actually fit? Do you actually go to the gym? Do you actually do things? Because it's more a fashion icon thing than the actual fitness part of it. What we do know is that life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We need to train for endurance, not for speed. I like to call it, I don't even know if it's, a, if it's an actual word in the dictionary, but I like to use the word stickability. Um, and I think it's a rare trait in, in these days, is be, people, um, seem to be capitulating very easily. They don't seem to have a conviction about anything. Well, that's not true, probably. People on the left seem to have a conviction. They're, they're very convic they have a very strong conviction about climate change and um, uh, um, First Nations, referendums and all these different things that we are confronted with day after day after day. But to be quite honest, I think it's a distraction. Who would have thought, who would have, yesterday, people would have been living their lives probably in Israel, going, possibly going to the beach, possibly doing different things. But this morning, There, there's at least you know, 250 Israelis dead. Um, I was watching uh, this morning where they were pulling women and children out of cars. And who knows what's happened to them. We, we just need to pray as we have been praying for them. But who, who, who knows? Yesterday was one thing. How do we know what's going to be tomorrow? How do we... How do we um, know what's going to happen tomorrow? So, from our perspective, we, need, we just need to be ready. Regardless of what it is today, regardless of what's going to be tomorrow, we have to be ready. 
So how do we get ourselves spiritually ready? Well, the Christian life is not a flash in the pan. I don't know if you heard, that's an old term, a flash in the pan. So uh, what it means is here today, gone tomorrow. You might have a, a reasonably safe bank balance today, but it might be gone tomorrow. We can, we can put our trust in the world or we can put our, uh, our trust in Christ. Where, where do we go in regards to how do we prepare ourselves and equip ourselves? See, the meaning of a flash of the pan is some, something that is promising in the beginning but fizzes out later. So the, the question is, are we fizzers? Do we just fizz out when things get tough? When do we just... just Drop the ball, so to speak. It, uh, I had an example of this. Is uh, his the person's initial performances were were, were good, but they were merely a, a flash in the pan. Nowadays, they deliver only mediocre work. In the in the workplace today, there well, it used to be that you got a new job and you you were put on probation. Probation used to be three months where they would. They would test you out just to make sure that you're the right person to fit into the into the, the workplace. But today, um, they have changed a lot of places from three months probation to six months probation. The, the reason that they do that is because people can cover up their faults for three months. They can put a they can put a lid on it. They can put this, this facade up that looks fantastic and they do all the right things. But what they've found is that people between three and six months, if there's something hidden, they can't contain it any longer. And so what they do is that they've now changed the probation period to around six months because these things then come to the surface. So they're making sure that you're not a flash in the pan. The reason that they do that is because it's, it takes so much work to, to, if someone doesn't work out, to try and, um, well, you can't you know, sack them or, or one of these days because there's all these um, repercussions to that. In 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, it says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness, spiritual training, is of value in everything and in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come okay so physical training is of some value but spiritual training godliness or spiritual training is of value in everything in every situation in every part of life and it holds us in good stead basically that's what we're saying it holds us firm paul tells timothy to train yourself to be godly so we need to be aware of, of today, we don't understand, I suppose, the Greek culture at the time. The Greeks, they were right into spiritual fitness, not spiritual fitness, but physical fitness. It was, it was part of their life. It was, um, they were renowned, renowned for their um, athletic abilities and what they did from an ath uh, athletic perspective perspective and so when when Paul is telling Timothy to train yourself to be godly he was using the Greek terminology there of, of what was going on in the day for the, for the Greek word for train is the same word used in reference to exercising or or drills I don't know if you heard that word drills it's not drilling but it, um, in army in army terminology they do drills as uh, Josh would know and drills, uh, when they do drills, they put you through the most ex um, strenuous situations. And they put you in these situations where it, bring, where it brings out any issues or any problems that you may have. So it's not just running around the block or, or, or lifting a few weights. What they used to do is put you through these. So they actually saw it as like um, going, preparing to go to war. Because in these Greek, um, uh, these Greek, uh, athletic events it was like going to war that's how that's how um, that's how important it was and how decisive it was 
the Greeks dedicated a great deal of time and effort to perfecting themselves in preparation. This took time, it took commitment, and it took sacrifice. So it wasn't sort of you know, going to the pub after going to the gym. This was this is a lifestyle. They the way that they did it, it was a lifestyle. It was uh, sacrifice.
and I'll look at uh, I'll look at our assessment process shortly. But I want to, uh, and, and so what you do in that honest assessment is that you that you determine what your weak points are. So things like, do I read my Bible enough, or do I target my reading? Do I pray enough, or do I target my prayers? So why do we need to target weak areas? That's a fair question, isn't it? Why do we need to target weak areas? You know what the answer is? Because the devil will. He knows, he looks for our weaknesses. He's always on the prowl looking for who he can devour. Not scratch up, not beat up, but devour. He will look for those weaknesses. So we have to be ahead of the game. We need to do an honest assessment of who we are and what we do. Who we're hanging around with. The assessment of ourselves is critical, but also being accountable is critical. So being around people who will be honest with us, who will ask the tough questions. Ross, are you doing this? Ross, are you doing that? Ross, are you watching? Are you getting on? Um, it's interesting, I, um, I think I've already said this a while back, but when I was watching the cycling, things had come on the, the, the channel, at because you know, cycling is at night, so it's you know, 11 o'clock to 1.30. It's amazing what comes on it. <coughs> so what I had to do was, I go, okay, I, I don't want to put myself in that position. So I start watching it on SBS On Demand, where there's no... It's, it, it, you can't swap channels and all these different things in the breaks and all this sort of stuff. So you put things in place to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Because at one o'clock in the morning, no one, your mate's not going to ring you up and say, what are you doing there, Ross? Because he thinks you're asleep. So you, you, there is a, a self-accountability that, that we have to put in our place as well. Before we do any... Uh, fit, uh, physical fitness, any uh, fitness program, the first thing that has to be done is that they do a testing on your current fit, fitness levels. They determine what your level is. And so basically they, they also do a, a bit of a medical check on you. Make sure that your heart is in the, you know, uh, functioning correctly. Making sure that you haven't got any ailments. And normally you have to fill out a form these days uh, to, so that they don't get sued. But the main thing is to check, you know, is your heart, you know, have you got any problems with your heart? Are you any, on any medication? Are you this, are you that? Have you got any weaknesses in your, in your body? And so, and from a spiritual perspective, the same thing has to happen. We need to do a heart check. Where's our heart? Where are we at? See, Proverbs um, 20, uh, 4, uh, 4 23 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for it flows. For from it flows springs of life. Hebrews chapter 3 um, it is interesting. It says in verses 6 to 8, it says, But Christ as a son is in charge of God's entire house. And we are God's house if we keep it our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ, that is why the Holy Spirit says, today, not tomorrow, not, week, not next week when I go on holidays and I'll have more time, today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled. Then they tested me in the wilderness. And then in verse 14 to 15, it says, For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says today, when your heart, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as Israel did when they rebelled. And I haven't got it here, but 
in verse in chapter 4 it says from verse 7 it says so God set another time for entering his rest and that time is today God announced this through David when much later in the words already quoted today when you hear his voice don't harden your heart three times in a chapter and a half that same little sentence is said today when you hear his voice don't harden your heart today not tomorrow tests come to soften our spirits not to harden our hearts Tests come to soften our spirits, not to harden our hearts. But so many of us get hurt by church, get hurt by Christians, get hurt by what's been done, and what is the first thing that happens to us? We harden our hearts. Round one to the devil. It, we hardly have, and we say, oh, you, you put a protection in your heart because you don't want to be hurt again. Well, being hurt, unfortunately, is life. Yeah. It happens. And there's some people there that, you know, that, 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 you know, what you do if someone hurts you that way, you just stay away from them. If a church has hurt you, that happens. It's just the way of life. Second Corinthians 13, verse 5 says, Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. Surely you, surely you know that Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. We can't afford to be fake. We can't bluff our way through life. Because eventually, we'll be found out. And I'm sure in life you've seen people who fake their way, they, they bluff their way through life. I was doing training for, for a group um, and there are... A, a supermarket chain and I was doing training for them and it was all their managers and as I'm going along we're doing this stuff and they had to write their assessments and the store manager was one of the people I was training and he came up to me and he said Ross uh, I've got a problem and I said what's that he said I can't write he's the store manager of a big, like there's a, over a hundred people in this this business, and he's the store manager. I said, you can't write. He said, no, never could. He said, I faked my way through. He said, I'm very good verbally, and I can talk my way through anything. He said, but I can't re read or write. I said, well, how do you do your job? He said, I'll get somebody else to do it. I tell them that it's part of their development, and they do it. <laughs> and he had faked his way through lot, through his work and he got to the point of being the store manager of this major supermarket store. And I said, well, we've got a bit of a problem. I said, because you have to write. He said, I oh, know. So, have these, there's people like this all the way through life that have, that have worked their way through life who are illiterate. But we've got a lot of people who are spiritually illiterate. Yeah. They sound good. They sound good. They've got all the right, you know, praise the Lord and hallelujahs and brothers and sister and all this stuff. But they're spiritually illiterate. Don't read their word. Don't pray. Don't study. We can't be fake, because in these coming days, I can tell you, it, we will be found out if we're fake. We will be. And I know there's no one in this room 
that I'm talking to about that. All online. <laughs> so what we have to do is that we have to embrace the truth. First, uh, 2 Corinthians 13 8 says, For we can't oppose the truth, but must always stand for the truth. In this time, standing for biblical truth is not easy or popular. Cheryl and I were with some friends the other day, and Cheryl started talking to this lady about, we've been trying to make inroads into, you know, um, talking about Christian things and so forth, because they're, they're not Christians. And she started talking to her about truth. Biblical truth, the Word of God. And this is what this person said. No, I don't agree with that. It's, it's all about your personal truth. It's all about your personal truth. That's what it's all about. Lie. Lie from the devil. It's not about personal truth. It's about the truth that comes from the Word of God. We, we can't be, as I said earlier, we can't be swayed. Do you have opinions? Do you have convictions? You say, yes, I do. Great. But can you defend them? Can you defend your faith? When it's challenged, not if, when it's challenged, will we be able to defend our faith? Or do we capitulate? We need a spiritual fitness coach. If we think we can do this on our own, another tick for the devil. All he tries to do is to cut us from the herd to isolate us. In John 8, 31, 32 says, Jesus said to those who believe in him, if you continue in my word, you really are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You can't run this marathon alone. If you think you can, we're defeated, even from the start. Before we even start the marathon. See, we need a coach. We need a, and that coach has to be Christ. A coach guides, directs, and corrects. People like the guidance, they like the direction, they don't necessarily like the correction. And that's part of reading the Word of God, being led by the Holy Spirit. If we, if we are led by the Holy Spirit, then God will direct us in, the, in a reading and it will bring conviction. It will bring a challenge to us. Are we up for the challenge? Are we prepared to say, Lord, I was wrong? Remember happy days, Fonzie? Couldn't say the word wrong. <laughs> See, Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 to 12, says this. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person f falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And we all know who that third person is in that court, and that's Christ alone. So, in conclusion, if an athlete is to be stronger and grows muscle and produces results, they must have the right food plan. And so must we if we are going to become spiritually fit and strong. So that spiritual food plan, which we've talked about already, but just want to re- uh, reinforce it is daily reading of our Word of God, daily prayer time, regular fellowship with believers, 
which includes being accountable to people and taking communion regularly. They are the four components of a spiritual food plan. It's interesting, I just I wrote this down, um, Proverbs 16, 1, 3 and 9. And it says, We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. Verse 3, Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And verse 9 says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So it's great to have plans. It's great to have, but but... At the same time, I, I saw this, it says, in the midst of your planning, God will often direct you in a surprising way. You'll hear inner promptings that will spur your thoughts. How do we get those inner promptings? How do we get to hear those inner promptings? Going back to Hebrews 3, Hebrews 4, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Thank you, Jim.